of the United, United States, States of America, and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice, justice for all. Okay, can I get a roll call attendance, please? Mr. Holcomb? Yes. Mrs. Castle? Yes. Mr. Kimball? Yes. Mrs. Ott? Yes. Mr. Pittman? You might ask to unmute him, Sarah. Yep. Here. Miss Scott? Here. And Mrs. Thompson? She's muted. Gloria, you're muted. <laughs> Here. I think we all got muted because we all got kicked off for a second. All right, so that's it for attendance. Yes. Public fundamentals with public comments. Public input is fundamental to the operation of Madison District Schools. Our public has the opportunity to speak at every board meeting, a period known as public comment and set aside. We give parents and other citizens a chance to speak directly. Comments are limited to three minutes. Um, who are the people, Mr. Abdullahad? You have um, Scott Schultz, Nanette Basler, Buddy Marr, Tom Smith, Amy Lewis. And if anyone else, raise your hand or write it in the chat so I can see your name. But right now, that's all you have, Mr. Um, Kimball. Okay, Mr. Marr, and then uh, Tom Smith. So what you want, Mr. Right, Marr, so move, and then move, Tom move. Smith. Yeah. All right. Let's start with uh, Mr. Schultz. Oh, Mr. Schultz. Yep. Mr. Schultz. You oh, might, Sarah. You, um, Sarah. You might ask him to unmute himself. Scott Schultz, um, can you hear us? Oops. Muted. Maybe come back to him, Mr. Kimball. All right, let's go with uh, Nanette Bassler then. Nanette, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep. 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 You're up. Okay. Um, I would like to use my time to read some concerns from the public. There are a few issues the public has with the school board. One presentation, many in the public are wondering how much we pay for MASD training. The reason, well first, is how your presentation appears on Zoom. Many on this board had MASD, tra MASD tra pres presentation training over a year ago in 2019 about presentation. Now while doing Zoom meetings, it is more important than ever. Therefore, things like eye rolling or repeatedly looking away at a screen or something to your left or right is improper. Allowing communication as if someone was standing near you in Wilkinson and you visually communicate with them as they are standing four feet away from you or you texting during a meeting is a violation. Two, feelings and opinions versus character attacks. Next, there is a difference between expressing your opinion, such as the public being disgusted in the way someone voted, you must remember each of you represents the public. The public and a board member can express how they feel about a particular vote. If you take ownership of someone's opinion, that is on you. Now, if you attack someone directly, such as a personal attack on their character, or telling them to shut up, shut up, shut up, three times with the anger in your tone, it is a direct violation of your bylaws. Per bylaw 0144.2D, encourage the expression of opinion by all board members. In addition, per bylaw 0145, 
the Board of Education's intent is to provide an environment that fosters the respect and dignity of each person. To this end, the board is committed to maintaining an environment free of harassment and intimidation. Therefore, the public is disgusted. The board members would be upset with the public opinion of a result of a vote and equally disgusted at the idea that an officer of the board would break bylaws and not publicly address that. Does the ethical line move for each of you depending on the board member? Why not be upset about rudeness and a direct violation of bylaws when someone says shut up and improperly gaveling, but some members are going to be upset because someone is expressing their disappointment about a vote? Three, agenda. In February 2020, you all received training for MASB board training, Rod Green. He had encouraged you repeatedly to post the agenda online. When you violate your own bylaws and the Open Meetings Act, you are creating a sense of distrust with the public. When you don't post the agenda, come to a meeting, ask if everyone has seen the email and then vote with barely no discussion, you are disenfranchising the public. Board discussion. Per bylaw 0123A through C, you shall all keep the citizens informed of the progress and problems of the school district and the citizens shall be urged to bring their aspirations and concerns about the district to the attention of this body. Four, gaveling. You are equals on the board, even the officers. Some of you have additional responsibilities, but your input is equal. The president only has two additional responsibilities per your bylaw. One, to preside at meetings of the board. This means that the president should have a working knowledge of Robert's rule of order and know when he can gavel and when he cannot. A president cannot gavel someone because he disagrees. In fact, if the board president wants to speak- okay, Mrs. Give, Mrs. Mrs. Bassler, hand you're already, you're already three the minutes and 20 seconds. The board president. You're already over the three minutes. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Let's go with uh, Amy Lewis next. Ms. Lewis. Hello there, I just uh, got um, unmuted. Um, let me continue. A president cannot gavel someone because he disagrees. In fact, the board president, if he wants to speak and give his opinion, he must hand off the gavel. To go beyond this is overreaching of the board president's powers. In addition, by the way, I don't appreciate you looking away when I was, we were just talking about character and you're staring at something and not looking at the screen. It's very disrespectful and doesn't show good presentation, Mr. President. Anyway, to go beyond this is overreaching the president's powers. In addition to that power, the board president has the ability to, thank you, Mr. Kimball, he has the ability to prove other duties appropriate. Are you listening? Thank you. To the office, such as representing the board and speaking to the press, although any board member is allowed to speak to the press, it would also include duties like reviewing the agenda. The president must display, display, display diplomacy and respect to preside over a meeting. If he has limited understanding of Robert's result order and cannot follow appropriate processes, he should consider stepping out of that position so that someone such as the vice president could preside as she demonstrated her abilities to do so in a recent meeting. Five, being seen and heard. Per the Open Meetings Act, section 15.260, section three, all persons should be permitted to attend any meeting, which includes seeing or hearing a meeting. If a digital meeting occurs, a member should, uh, it, and a member is accidentally removed from the meeting. The board president must stop the meeting as the board member represents the public and is an immediate violation of the Open Meetings Act to resume the meeting until the member can rejoin the meeting. Any discussion or any topics are null and void and must be readdressed so the board members who represent the public they can, can, can or cannot attend the meeting. They have, uh, the board members can have equal time to see and hear the full discussion. When you didn't do that to Ms. Scott, you violated the Open Meetings Act by continuing the meeting and not hearing the discussion. Whether or not it affects the vote, the violation occurs when the board member is absent from the discussion. Per bylaw 0123, the board has the obligation to determine and assess citizen desires and are undoubtedly the authority to exercise their best judgment. That's not happening. Closed sessions. You're asked in February to remove the Open Meetings Act. You even provided a resource that tra trains boards and councils. Seems you've not reviewed the OMA or taken action to get training. As when you go into closed session, you cannot just cite AE of the Open Meetings Act. Per the Sunshine Laws, you must cite, cite the specific reason. City Council does it all the time. For example, they go Madison Heights v. John Smith, or for perfect example, Madison Heights versus Gary Sayers. It's a violation of public's rights when you do not express the exact subject matter. The president did that a couple times last year and he also did it, a, did it a most recent meeting. None of you have reviewed the Open Meetings Act when I approached you in February. And the reason why I know is seven meeting minutes. 
you were asked in February to remove the re review the OMA, and I left some things out. One of the main things I left out was when you put corrected minutes up there, besides your proposed minutes, you were have to supposed to show the public your strike through changes of your board minutes. If you're not showing the changes from the proposed, to the, and you're supposed to leave the proposed up there to the official minutes and show your corrections, it's a violation of the OMA. I told you in February, OMA, and you none of you have even read even the handbook, let alone the actual law, but the handbook that the state of Michigan put out that was really easy. All right, Ms. Now, Lewis, you're at three minutes and 20 seconds. Thank you. Can I reserve the right to speak again, sir? Uh, the next meeting, sure. Next um, I believe is, that we can come uh, up Mr. and everybody can speak. Everybody Mr. can speak Mark? again, have an opportunity to speak again once yes. everybody has spoke for the Open Meetings Act, sir. Your time I'm is requesting up. an additional three minutes once everybody has spoke. I'm not granting that. Uh, uh, are Mr. you violating Mr. the open Mr. meetings, Mar. Yes, sir? Mr. Marr. Mr. Marr. This is a hard act to follow. Oh, wow. Okay, unfortunately, I got to come back on here to clarify my claim to the other six board members, Mr. Kimball, not you. I also have to uh, clarify some falsehoods that you made on your last comment. Even though the claim wasn't even made to you, it was made to the other six board members. Number one, a falsehood. I do not own, did not, do not own ATMs, did not own the ATM that was in the high school. The reason that ATM was put in the high school is kids throughout the day have obligations that they have to make payments for many functions at the school, books, whatnot. The school does not offer a credit card processing machine. So the kids would have to leave the school, go to an ATM, 7-Eleven, wherever, during school hours to obtain this money to take care of these obligations. All procedures, procedures were followed. Every I was dotted. Every T was crossed. You were on the board, Mr. Kimball. By far, you were on a witch hunt. There is no way that that ATM went into that building without the proper proceedings to go through to make sure it went through. Enough on that. Let's go to number two. You made an allegation of me having a key in February and swimming in the pool. Yes, I did have a key when I was off the board. I was also a coach. I coached football for eight years. I coached football before I was on the board. It's common practice that assistant coaches have keys. It's also common practice that coaches use the weight room, the pool as a perk. I coached eight years football and going on my third year in softball. So in February, we were already three weeks into practice for girls softball. We were meeting let, on Saturday. Let, 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 let me just pause you. Why are you interrupting me, sir? And hold Why on. are you interrupting I, me, sir? I just want to make the point that I never used your name or said that you were the person behind this. But go ahead. Okay, well, hey, I'm glad you did that, sir. But everybody knows who you were talking about, Mr. Kimball. Okay? The fact of the matter is you just interrupted me. You shouldn't have did that. I coached football for eight years. I was coaching before I was on the board. I was going in my third year of softball, girls softball. We were practicing three weeks into the end of February on Saturday mornings and two to three days during the week. Okay. I got off the board because the administration was feeling pressure from you. I stepped off of coaching, turned my key in, didn't want to have cause no trouble. Um, might I remind you when I coached, I coached for free for them eight years, never paid, that made a penny. It saved the district thousands of dollars. It was pure volunteer. That's what I did. So there's that. The claim that I made is to the six other board members. Mr. Kimball, I don't know why you did it, but you did. You clearly did not disclose to the public. All right, Mr. Your Mark, relationship. Mr. Mark, you're why are you minutes. interrupting me, you're sir? You're at three minutes. In 10 seconds right now so wow unfortunately you'll have to finish at the next meeting now is mr uh schultz wow. do we ever find out what happened with mr schultz um uh, scott schultz um are you able to unmute yourself sarah if you could try oh scott Try to unmute him, Sarah, or ask him to unmute. 
Oh, you have tried? Full time. Okay. All right, well then let's move on to uh, the last one then, Tom Smith, if he can uh, figure out what's going wrong with Mr. Schultz, we can come back to him. I'm unmuted, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I'm Tom Smith. I listened to the bond discussion from the June 29th board meeting. It seems that we are getting ahead of ourselves discussing a new bond issue before we've determined or decided on uses for the money but I understood the discussion of a renewal versus a new millage. As was noted, the district needs to get feedback from the community and set priorities for any new spending. Another alternative I thought of was how to set aside money. How about setting aside money in a fund for improvements instead of borrowing it from the state? That way you don't have to pay interest on the state's money, you're simply using your own. Of course, you have to manage the funds and ensure that they are only used for the designated purpose but you could save borrowing costs and get more value for your money. I heard a comment that homeowners and businesses are the taxpayers. I've heard this before, suggesting that renters don't pay taxes. It's true that renters don't get a bill from the city treasurer, but you can be sure that all landlords are passing property tax costs on to their tenants. Anyone who thinks that renters aren't paying taxes should think again. That's why renters who are eligible to vote have an interest in bond proposals too. It's going to affect their living costs just like property owners. I'm disappointed that I'm still hearing insulting behavior from certain board members and citizens. Harassment and empty accusations are obvious to the public. Even a child can see through them. Disrespect shown to the board is also disrespect for the community. I repeat, any board member who cannot behave civilly at these meetings should do the community a favor and resign. They're hurting the community they claim to represent. Anyone who wants to run for the school board who is from the old board or is supported by them, don't. You had your shot and you blew it. I've heard a lot of complaints about procedures. Well, you were caught mismanaging the district's finances by the district, State Department of Education. Several procedures. You were caught by the Plant Moran audit on $110,000 worth of undocumented or underdocumented expenses, along with several other problems and procedures. The majority of the school board is doing a fine job cleaning up after you. You <laughs> failed the public's trust once. We don't need you to do it again. Move on. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And did we figure out uh, about Mr. Schultz or no? Mr. Schultz said um, he will not speak. So last call on anyone looking to um, address the board. If you could raise your hand. Um, President Willing. Willing, the President Willing. All right, well, if there's no one else. Let's move on to the superintendent's report, Mr. Abdullahad. Hello everyone. So um, a, a few things, um, just um, update on our meal distribution. We have so far approximately 115,000 meals distributed since the uh, pandemic um, had struck our, our state and our community. Um, also, our fiber has been lit finally. Yay, after all these years, our, um, our one network is officially on fiber. Um, speed is, is a huge game changer. Um, Oakland schools has been phenomenal on the transition and we're, we are ecstatic. Also, our task force met today. We had a two hour meeting. We're gonna follow up with another um, two hour meeting. We just ran out of time. We started um, talking about what back to school looks like. We are looking at the approach of what does um, where all students return look like. And uh, we didn't get a chance to address everything. Um, but it seems like in the state of Michigan that we're working backwards. So our approach is either at this time, either phase three or phase four. Uh, we know, we know we are not gonna be anywhere near in phase five. So it's either phase three, all virtual or phase four, which is in person. 
We are um, we have ordered our PPE equipment, masks for the students, um, decals, etc. Uh, but the situation is too fluid right now because what we could be talking about today could absolutely change uh, with one word from the governor's order. So we're asking families to be flexible. If you hear rumors, um, reach out to me. I will uh, clarify things. Um, we want to be open and transparent uh, with our parents. And we've also heard our parents um, through a survey that 40% um, of them, if we move to a hybrid model, don't have anywhere to put their children. And that is, that is a major concern uh, to us and to them. So we are trying to figure out what does uh, a full opening look like and how can we um, mitigate risk as uh, best as possible. Also, our football started you know, practicing. Um, they are taking their temperatures upon entry um, and they're uh, limiting conditioning to outside. Uh, marching band is next. Uh, that's looking to um, open. And if you, if I could put a plug in for the marching band, they are um, collecting uh, bottle returns. Um, if you need a place to drop them off, drop them off here in our in our um, office, and we'll get it to them. But it's a great fundraising activity. Uh, typically, our um, our band students are playing music. Uh, in the storefronts, but they can't really do that. So, you know, collecting bottle returns right now, it's a great alternative to help um, the marching band raise some money. Um, on Thursday, I am meeting with Neola to start looking at the 9,000s, which is relations. Um, I picked relations because I was trying to pick the least um, argumentative um, policy that I could present to this board. Um, so um, I figured if I could ease everyone with the 9,000s, um, that it might be something that we all could um, uh, come into consensus with. So once we kind of meet with them to talk about our options, we will do the same thing. We will have a, a session where they will present it to us. We will have options where you get to pick uh, this piece or this piece. And then we will follow the same procedures um, for first read, second read adoption. Um, I believe that concludes my superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Kimball. You're welcome. Next uh, board of education action items. First item, it's recommended the board of education approve the MHSAA membership resolution from August 1st, 2020 through July 31st, 2021, and to appoint the superintendent as designee. Um, I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Mr. President, I'll second. Okay. Mr. Pittman, thank you. Discussion? No. Nope. Okay, roll call vote, please. Mr. Holcomb. Yes. Mrs. Castle. Yes. Mr. Kimball. Yes. Ms. Lott. Yes. Mr. Pittman. Yes. Ms. Scott. Yes. And Mrs. Thompson. Yes. Motion passes seven zero. All right. Next item. It's recommended the Board of Education approve the Intergovernmental Agreement for Literacy Essentials (LEO) project between Oakland Schools and the district. I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Mr. Holcomb. Discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Mr. Pittman. Yes. Ms. Scott. Yes. Ms. Ott. Yes. Mrs. Castle. Yes. Mrs. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Holcomb. Yes. And Mr. Kimball. Yes. Well, 7-0. Next item is recommended the Board of Education approve the intergovernmental agreement for early literacy coach between Oakland schools and the district. I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? 
I'll second. Okay, thank you. This is I. Discussion? Okay, roll call vote, please. Mr. Kimball. Yes. Mr. Pittman. Yes. Mr. Holcomb. Yes. Ms. Scott. Yes. Mrs. Thompson. Yes. Mrs. Castle. Yes. And Mrs. Ott. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. <laughs> Next motion, it's recommended the Board of Education approve the purchase of 250 pre-bidded Chromebook, Chromebooks using ESSR, ER CARES Act funding. I'll make the motion, do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mrs. Thompson. Uh, discussion? Mr. President? Yes, Mr. Pittman. Okay, so this is 250 Chromebooks. How many did we approve uh, just a few months ago? 96. Okay, so are all of these for the high school? Yes, sir. And prep? The uh, two, yes, 250 sir. plus the 96. Right, because we also have to ensure that our teachers have also have one as well, Mr. Um, Pittman. Um, so when we're doing the virtual or Google Classrooms, we have to ensure that the teachers have a portable device too, should we have the need to go back from phase three to phase four. Okay, so that's for every student and every teacher, plus probably a few. Okay, so we didn't have them for every student prior to this approval? No, no, we, we had some, Mr. Pittman, and we were also using some from the old source um, that parents had turned in but they weren't they were older devices from 2016 2017 um we really needed to invest um in the technology of the high school it really needed i mean they were using um ipad 2s second generation ipads where the elementary was using ipad pros and the middle school was using the newest ipads it, it was just we needed to invest money into the high school Okay, uh, so if we did if we did not approve this, not every student would be able to have the, the Chromebook, the brand new Chromebooks, right? No, yeah, yes, sir, we would not, we would be okay. short. I would just caution you, Mr. Abdullahad, that if, if, if that is the way, if that is the way it is, we probably shouldn't advertise on a full page ad that we have brand new Chromebooks for everyone if we don't. Well, I, I was anticipating that I, I well, was being hopeful that, that this board would would approve. Uh, okay, but but that's not true. That's not being truthful in advertising. Okay. <clears throat> Which full page ad was that? It's in I think every C and G uh, newspaper. It's in Woodward Talk, I believe. Uh, Madison Park News. It's in at least two. It's in at least those two, and I think it's in the Warren ones also. It might be in all of them. All right, well, I, I've got a question if, if in fact you're finished, Mr. Pittman, if not, go yes. ahead and continue. Yeah. Okay, the, uh, the funding for this comes from the CARES Act. That is federal funding that the state received. Is that not correct, Mr. Yeah. Bullock? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, I, I'm satisfied. Anyone else have, have any questions, comments? Uh, can I just say something um, that um, federal money is when it's driven down to us is not meant for the board to just kind of hold on to It's supposed to be directed to the students. And so every effort that we are doing is to push those resources down to our students. And so if I was overzealous in anticipating that approval, I apologize but I can't imagine a more, um, a better way to invest money that is given to us by the federal government than our students. No, nobody would, nobody's board. arguing that, Mr. Abdullahad. We're just okay. we're, I'm just stating the fact that this is another instance of advertising something ahead of it being approved by the board. There, th th yeah. These are steps, you know, things come to the board and then they get done. You don't do things sure. and then bring them to the board, such as terminating employees or eliminating positions, right? Those come to the board to be approved right. or, or not approved before well, they go out. 
we're getting off topic. Okay. Here. Okay. I accept that. Thank you, Mr. Pittman. All right, uh, Sarah, did you disable chat? I think that was uh, someone missed doing that. All right, if there's no one else, let's take a roll call vote, please. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Pittman? Yes. Mr. Holcomb? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Mr. Kimball? Yes. Mrs. Castle? Yes. Mrs. Ott? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. All right, next item. It's recommended that the Board of Education approve the 2020 2021 board meeting schedule. I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? I'll make a second. Thank you, Ms. Castle. Discussion? No? Okay, roll call vote, please. Mr. Pittman? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Mr. Holcomb? Yes. Mr. Kimball? Yes. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Mrs. Ott? Yes. And Mrs. Castle? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. All right, next item. It's recommended that the Board of Education review the appraisal to either approve or review submitted appraisal. We actually have two motions, so let's go with the first one. The um, quote was $2,100. I'm uh, not against tabling this motion until we have time to review the proposals for the next meeting. Um, I'll make a motion to that effect if someone wants to second it. I'll second it. What are you making okay. a motion for? To, to table ta it? Table, I'm, I'm going to make a motion to table both uh, quotes for appraisals, one's at 2100, the other's at 2800, till we have time to review this further and possibly even get possibly another quote. That seems a little high to me for that building, but uh, I agree. We can table this and bring it back at the next meeting and have time to do a little more research. So for the first motion of 2100, I make the motion to table this. Uh, I believe we had a second. Now we're at discussion. If anyone has anything else to say? I do. Okay. Um, Go ahead. Okay, so of course everyone knows I was removed from the June 15th meeting and apparently this is where this was voted at. But can I ask why are we getting these buildings appraised? Only, only in the event that we have to make cuts to the district it's a good idea to know how much that building's worth. If that comes down to two, two teachers, three teachers, um, at this point, we're just finding out what it's worth in today's market, that's it. Okay, so my, my other that's question- That's a lie. My yeah. other question, my other question is that, hello, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. My, my other question, um, uh, Board President, is this is a Board of Education recommendation to get these appraisals, correct? That's what we voted on, yes. Okay, so my question is why, okay, you yourself, Board President, said that many occasions in meetings you've said, we're not in the business of real estate, that we, we're not into the business of real estate, we're in the business of education. So I would like to get Mr. Abdulahad's recommendation on why would we be spending money on appraisals at this time, considering we have the pandemic, the cleaning supplies, the masks, we're trying to get students back to school, we have to have extra help, nursing. Why would we, Mr. Abdulahad, can you, can you let us know what your recommendation would be on this? Um. Again, the board made a motion, right? So it was not a recommendation that we presented. I think our number one priority right now is preparing to return back to school. I've, I've said this several times that anything um, that is made, even though I have to act on your motions, I think number one priority, if I were 
a trustee to give myself a goal, I would be like, I would like to see a goal of returning to school game plan because we can't get that wrong. Uh, but at the same time, when this board makes a motion, we have to act on it. Um, I really need to focus on back to school and what that looks like, but whatever you, you as a board decide, we will act on. I just so hope that we look at bigger at, at the bigger picture of what return to school looks like. So if we're not in the business of real estate, why would we be spending our money when we need to worry about the education of our students and the safety of our students? Why is it, why are we doing this at this time? We can't look at this once the kids get back into school, like maybe table it till October when the kids are back in school and it doesn't, I, I would it doesn't, like to answer that. I'd like to answer that when you're, when you're done. Go ahead. It just doesn't make sense to me that this board does not look at the education and the safety of the students at this time. It's a big mm -hmm. ongoing task for mm -hmm. us to, and parents, me as a parent, to be concerned that we're not, we're spending money on getting appraisals for the building. It's not like to get an appraisal on the building would take months. We could get an appraisal done within a week, I'm sure of it, on a building. And we just, I, I don't feel that it's necessary at this time to be worried about appraisal on a building. We have to worry about getting the kids back to school safely. Okay, I'm done. All right, let me answer that. That's that, that essentially you made my case. There's extra cost involved with COVID-19. And at some point, we may have to look at what we can live with and, and what we can give up. And I think it's only prudent that we know what that building's worth. I question these amounts for that appraisal. And typically a commercial appraisal is not done in a week. In fact, uh, Mr. Abdullah, how, how long did it take for the appraisal on Edison? Wasn't that uh, almost two months before it was also, yeah, no. but at Edison, at Edison, there was a uh, one level appraisal and a more extensive appraisal um, of a building. Um, All right. Well the, well, the point with this is just to know what this building is worth, instead of cutting more uh, to the students, if we absolutely had to, we could uh, sell that building and use the money towards the students, teachers, whatever. It's just a good idea to know how much the buildings were. And that's why we're having an appraisal do it, uh, appraiser, because uh, anyone else, it's, it's guesswork. In fact, uh, appraisers are a matter of opinion as well, but it's a qualified opinion. So uh, what we're talking about right now is tabling this for right now. So uh, unless uh, anyone else has anything to say about that, we're voting on tabling the first one. Anybody else? No. Am I allowed to speak again one more time? Can we put a date on that, like tabling it at what time? The next meeting, two meetings, October, September. Can we put uh, a specific date on tabling it? I don't, I don't think we table stuff that way. We, we just table it. We bring it up at a uh, later date. I'm asking if we can table it to a specific date, which we can do that. Well, the only problem with that is what if we're not ready to act on it at that date as well? I agree, this is not a high priority, but I think it is a good idea to know how much this building is worth. Like I said, I'd rather get rid of this building than cut students or teachers. Well, we have if, a vacant if, property. If it, if, it, if it comes down to that. If we have a vacant property that we already know what the worth is of that, so we could start with the vacant property. And which vacant property is that? The one on 11 Mile. That, that's a vacant piece of land that, that's not even comparable. Mr. Kimball, may I say something? Yeah. Sure. I, I, don't wanna, I don't want us to inadvertently scare um, our employees or parents because you guys are discussing cuts. Um, our budget is looking good right now. We are prepared for next school year. So I don't wanna inadvertently scare uh, employees um, as you're discussing things. Well, cuts right now are not in our so i just want to just this is not because people not are watching us to, this is not intended okay. to scare employees maybe to reassure them that we're willing to do what we have to do to maintain a certain level of service well I, president yes go ahead 
I really don't see the problem with tabling it until perhaps after the students are back in school. We're talking a month or two, or just table it to a later date to be specified in our agenda. Well, at the point that we would revisit this, it would be on the agenda for a meeting. So, um, well, uh, the motion that I made is to table this to a future date. If we don't want to do that as a whole, then we got to vote it down. So, at this point, unless anyone else has any questions or comments, let's go ahead and take a vote on it. We're voting to table it. Yes. We're voting to table it to a future date. Yes. Okay. Ms. Scott. Yes. Mr. Holcomb. Yes. Mr. Pittman. Yes. Mrs. Castle. Yes. Mrs. Thompson. Yes. Mrs. Ott. Yes. Mr. Kimball. Yes. S is seven zero. All right. Next item is a recommended Board of Education review. The appraisal to either approve or review submitted appraisal. Uh, once again, I'm going to move to table that to a future date. Mr. Kimball, can't you also that? just, can't you just also withdraw it from the agenda? Remember our training, they talked about we could just withdraw something at that we, time we from would, the agenda. We would have to amend the, uh, the agenda. Uh, this is simple just to table it to a future date. Okay. Okay. Uh, anybody have any comments? No? Okay, roll call vote, please. Do we Mr. Kimball, do we have a second on that, Mr. Kimball? Uh, did we? I got the first. Who's got the second? I'll second it. All right. Okay, roll call vote, please. Mrs. Ott? Yes. No. Mr. Kimball? Yes. Mr. Pittman? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Mr. Holcomb? Yes. Mrs. Castle? Yes. And Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. All right, next item. It's recommended the Board of Education approve the proposed board minutes from the June 15th, 2020 meeting, June 29th, 2020, and June 30th, 2020. I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? Mr. President, I'll second the motion. Thank you, Mrs. Ott. Discussion? I have discussions about this. All right. Once again, I'm going to bring this up that I was removed from the June 15th meeting and was left out of the discussions and everything that was talked about. I contacted MASB attorney. They responded back. And I would like for Mr. Abdullah had to speak on that. Well, the motion is um, to approve yeah. these minutes or not. Well, I can't. That, okay, that we're in this that would be we're something in, totally separate. No, we're in discussion about the meeting minutes, which the which is the June fifteenth meeting, which on Monday the twenty ninth, <coughs> we Mr. Abdullahad was supposed to get back to us on Friday, but we were still waiting from the attorney from MASB. So I I don't see how we can vote on that until we discuss that. Well, we can we we can vote on it respectfully. You have a vote that you can vote no. But this is the discussion time about those meeting minutes and the that, meeting. That, that's correct. That's what I'm doing. I've asked Mr. Abdullah had to speak on that. Can I, can I speak on that or what would you like me to do? Go ahead. So um, Brad from MASB, we went back and forth a few times. He suggested that I let um, Ms. Scott review the video. I said, we've attempted. Um, the initial video on Zoom was a partial and it was deleted um, by our previous HR director. Um, and then we attempted a recovery uh, on our Facebook, one, to, to assist the police in trying to help, but we couldn't in, in, our, in our police report. Um, and we, we weren't successful in that recovery. So I notified Brad, I said, Brad, we don't have the video. Um, and his last email, um, to me was, so I said, you know, I basically asked him what, what can we do? Cause we don't have, 
Um, you know, we don't have that. I, I said to him, I don't have the recording. The partial recording was deleted from our HR director for technical issues. The Facebook live portion was taken down and removed for sexual content nudity from a, a few Zoom bombers. We do not have access to that piece of it as well. We attempted recovery and an attempt uh, to present it to the police department with our police report without any success. What other options do we have available to us? He said, this is Brad uh, Benasek, legal counsel director of labor relations from Michigan Association of School Boards. He said, revisiting the items that were discussed during Ms. Scott's absence right. appears to be a viable option. So now it's up to you this board to decide what to do from there. So that, that is my report from that follow through. Mr. Kimball? Yes, Ms. Uh, Ms. Um, Ms. Uh, I was just going through the minutes from that meeting as well. Um, and every board action item, uh, Ms. Scott voted on. Um, so I don't know why it's she has to hear it. It's me? correct. It, you're right. I did vote on it because Mr. Abdullah had was telling me what we were voting on, but I still did not get the discussion or things that people were saying about it. Why were we were doing it? I was missing out on that. And that's the portion. I'm not asking to recall the votes. I'm asking to discuss and hear everyone's discussion on why we're doing things. I didn't get that. So I'm not asking to recall the votes. I'm asking as a board member to be able to be involved in the discussions on the things that were added when I was kicked out of the meeting and not let back in. That's what I'm asking. How many things were there? I have no clue. Mr. Uh, President? Yes, Mrs. Thompson. Can I ask and, and let, let me Let me pause right there, Mr. Holcomb. Uh, anyone wants to talk should be asked to be recognized. If we could do that, that would be great. Well, Mrs. Thompson, you have the floor. Did we, do we not put discussion in the minute? Uh, there should be. I don't Can I have I, I didn't take the minute. So and I'm I, on my iPad, so I can't look. Can, Can I speak on that, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. President? Ms. Scott? Go ahead. Um, I, uh, Ms. Thompson, I did try to go to the minutes. The minutes do not have the full discussions. And I pointed out two items where it said that I voted for it had my vote wrong and Mr. Pittman's votes wrong. So I pointed those things out on the vote because I wrote down what we were, we were voting on, but I could not hear the discussions. And it's not, the notes are not detailed on the discussion. So Open Meetings, Open Meetings Act requires as a board member, I am allowed to have the discussion on those items. Why? For example, I didn't know why we were putting the, I didn't hear why we wanted to put the, the admin building up for appraisal. So those are the items. And I don't know exactly how many there are. Maybe Mr. Abdullah can say four or five of them, but I just feel as a board member, it's my right to have those discussions, not to revote. Again, not to revote <laughs> to hear those discussions. All right, then I would suggest, uh, Ms. Scott, that you make a request via email and we'll add this to the next agenda. How's that? I, I added it. We spoke on this on Monday the 29th, and Mr. Abdullah I've, had. I've received no emails from you requesting this. Okay. Any request any request from a board member has to go to the board president. Okay, excuse me, board president. This was at a meeting that you were not at, which was Monday the 29th. We voted to have Mr. Abdullahad contact MASB, and it was going to be, Mr. Abdullahad was gonna let us know on Friday, by Friday, and we were gonna discuss it at the next meeting, which would be this meeting. And it was not on the agenda. So I, I guess I guess I recall that either we tabled it or you withdrew it for a later time, did we not, Ms. Scott? We said that we would give you till Friday mm -hmm. to talk to MASB and then mm -hmm. it would get back to us and we would add it, I believe, to this meeting. We couldn't do it to the next day meeting because there was not enough time. 
So, so are you okay with it being at this um, August 3rd board meeting? Because we would have to review our minutes. We would have to review all the votes to bring up uh, the topics of discussion. Are you okay waiting that, that, um, that's two correct. weeks? Make, make, make a request to me in writing and we'll add it to the agenda. I shouldn't have the to next send it. Mr. President. That's the rules. Mr. Holcomb, go ahead. Um, well, Beth is saying she did do at the last meeting. Uh, she did request that we talk about it at the next meeting and we agreed to it or whatever. Uh, but I, how do we know where to start or what to talk about from where she got kicked out? How do we go okay. find that? Yeah, I, I have no idea either because Mr. Abdullah was holding the phone up there and I do recall her participation in the meeting. So I'm a little confused on that as well. Okay, well, Mr. Abdullahad can tell you that himself that I asked several times to stop the meeting. I text, I said, I cannot hear. He was repeating what we were voting on several times. And this is going to be the second meeting that I am fighting to hear the discussions from a meeting that I was removed from whoever was hosting the meeting. I was removed and not allowed back in. So yes i took the vote i'm not asking to recall the votes i'm asking to discuss have the discussions it's just the discussions nothing else but the discussions mr holcomb go ahead do we know what them discussions are beth well i mean looking at the notes yes i could could pretty much figure it out well mr. once again the motion in front of us is to prove the minutes or not if you feel inclined to vote against them, that's fine. Uh, but if you make a written request in email for the very next meeting, I will add it to the agenda. That's how it works. Excuse me, board president. I'm going to say this again. You were not at the meeting that the board members at that time agreed to talk about it at this meeting. So I don't know why I have to be redundant to go through this. It's already then well, because it's going to be a month. If, it's if going you, to, you, excuse me, excuse me, Board President. Laws. Excuse me, it's been one month almost that I've been requesting this. I've gone out of my way to contact MASB. I've been discussing this. I don't know why I need to send an email to possibly have it refused when we've already voted on this. I just, told you, I, I just told you, if you send an email requesting it, I will add it to the agenda. There's two parts to the agenda. It's the superintendent puts the uh, district's business on. All requests from board members goes to the board president. I've not seen a request for that yet. If you make a request, I will put it on for the next meeting. So the, the uh, motion at hand right now is to approve the minutes from those three meetings. If you feel inclined, you can vote against this. It's perfectly reasonable. Any, anybody else? <laughs> Mr. President, yes, Mrs. I, I just, I mean, I would like to help uh, Ms. Scott, Ms. Scott out as much as possible. We had 12 board action items to vote on that night and she voted on them all. She uh, did her I, board I, comments. I, 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 get, I get that. She's not claiming to undo the votes. Right. She's but talking about the discussion, which in itself can be problematic unless everyone remembered every I, word for word they said because we have no recorded record. Okay. I was just... You know. So per perhaps between now and the next meeting, when it's put on the agenda, uh, we have time to recall what was said and review the notes. So once again, we're at the motion of approving these minutes. Uh, anyone else have discussion to that? Mr. President? Yes, Ms. Cass. Why don't we change the motion to approve the 29th and the 30th, and then I don't know what the right procedure would be would omit the 15th for now until and give Ms. Scott a, to send you that request um, to... Well, with, with, with all the respect on that though, it's not gonna change the outcome and she's not trying to undo the votes. So I, I, know. I, I don't see the point of that. Uh, of course. Who, who else has any input on that? No? All right. Well, Ms. Scott, if you send me a request, it will be put on the next agenda. We will discuss it as much as anyone can remember. 
but if that's it, let's uh, move on with the motion to approve the minutes. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Pittman. No. Mr. Holcomb. Yes. Mr. Kimball. Yes. Mrs. Ott. Yes. Ms. Scott. No. Mrs. Thompson. Yeah. Mrs. Castle. I, I have to say no because we're grouping all three meetings together. My vote is no. Passes four to three. All right, and the last item is the check register. It's recommended the Board of Education approve the monthly expenditures totaling $1,228,403.02. I'll make the motion on this. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Discussion? I do. Ms. Scott? Um, as everyone had seen my request, uh, I had requested um, a copy of the invoice from Thrun uh, Law Firm for the amount of $2,629.60 on page eight. Um, wondering what it, why it was that cost. And it stated on the invoice, um, Mr. President, on February 12th, you were in the office with Mr. Abdulahad and the attorneys, but nowhere can I find where you notified the board of that meeting or that outcome. Can you guys, can you discuss that? I don't believe we can, Mr. Abdulahad, can we? Yeah, this is, this is our, um, I believe Troon shows the details. It's our appeal. Um, our appeal for the uh, people accounting um, that we were dinged in 2017. Troon uh, Law Firm is our um, representative on that. So we met with them to discuss um, our appeal and, and our options going to the, do you recall that? Okay. And since, since we can talk about it, I do recall that uh, the superintendent and the board president had to be in agreement for that uh, appeal to be made. Is that not correct, Mr. Abdullahad? Yes. And that's why I was summoned there. Yeah. Truman did ask me what, yeah. It's, excuse me, Board President. Is there a reason why the board would not know of that and the cost since it's six or seven hours on that one particular day? Well, I don't know why it's six or seven hours. The meeting wasn't six or seven hours. It was like an hour. Um, uh, Mr. Abdullahad can answer that a lot better because this is through the state of Michigan. And I don't believe, uh, I haven't spoken of that meeting. Um, I don't believe that we can freely talk about that. Can we? Uh, I, you know, those six hours, uh, legal probably bills us for um, their preparation for the meeting, their, um, their recapping of the meeting, uh, and all of that. So it was not maybe six hours in total, but I am sure that they're billing us for the prep work to get to that meeting. And again, this is from the 2017 uh, People Accounting Appeal, nothing else. Right. Okay, so my question still remains, why wouldn't the board be told that? Why would I have to ask that? I, I believe I, I debriefed the board about our, 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 our appeal that we were up to, I, I believe if I sent, if I go back and review right. emails, I've, I've given you, um, an update on where we stood and we haven't heard anything since February. So there's nothing for me to update you on because I, I've not heard anything. That's all. All right, anybody else? No? Uh, roll call vote, please. Mr. Holcomb. Yes. Mrs. Castle. Yes. Mr. Kimball? Yes. Mrs. Ott? Yes. Mr. Pittman? Yes. Ms. Scott? No. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Motion passes six to one. All right, well, the next item is recommended that we move that the board convene in closed session on the Open Meeting Act to consider a letter from its attorneys dated July 13th, 2020, for the reason that the letter is exempt from disclosure under state law due to a client, attorney client privilege. 
I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Thank you. Discussion. Mr. I Mr. Do. President. Oh, I'm sorry, Beth. Mr. Do you want to go first? President. No, okay. go ahead, Bill. Go ahead. Okay, so we are going in just to discuss this letter, uh, the attorney client privileges, nothing else? I believe so, yes. Okay, just want to make that clear. Um, okay, I wanted to make it clear. I, I just want to remind the board um, when its vote is called to go into closed session, the most the motion must include the permissible reason, you know, like uh, Ms. Lewis was saying, the Sunshine Law for Open Means Act, such reasons would include discipline of an employee or student, discussion of real estate transactions, discussions of pending litigation, um, security measures, but we must state the specific subject matter. Well, I, I did, right here. Right. I'm just saying, I want, I want to make sure that we are solely to go into closed session for that specific reason, like Bill Pittman said, for this letter. No other discussions. I wanted to just make that clear. All right, anyone else? No? All right, roll call vote, please. Mr. Pittman. Yes. Ms. Scott. No. Mrs. Ott. Yes. Mrs. Castle. Yes. Mrs. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Holcomb. Yes. Mr. Campbell. Yes. Motion passes six to one. It is now 8.06. We are in closed session. Um, this time when we leave, um, the people are not going to get kicked out. So I did send you an email. So uh, all the people that are waiting, you just stay here. You're not going to get kicked out. Um, everyone else, I sent you an email. That the trustees, I sent you a, a Zoom email. Okay. Um, I'm on my iPad. Sarah, if you could do um, name change, um, BOE. Yep. Um, whoever's iPhone, you have to do a name change. You've got to have your first name and last name. Mr. Kimball, Miss um, Castle had an emergency, so she just gave me notice that she won't be joining us for the second uh, part of the board meeting. Okay. Uh, everyone else in? Can we resume? Gloria, Deb, that's two. Um, hold on. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, all of them. All of them I hear, Mr. Kimball. All right, we're back in session at 8.30 p.m. even. And moving on to the agenda, we have any uh, officer or committee reports by anybody? No? All right, uh, board member, open table discussion. Anybody have anything? Yeah, I'd like to just go back if we could to, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. President, I'm <laughs> Yes, Mr. Pittman, go ahead. All right, I'm sorry. Um, to the, uh, like the first, first thing would be the discussion of the upcoming school year. And I know that we are, you know, we're still kind of, you know, the governor could change any, everything but I just want to make sure that we are communicating with our parents and not just this task force. I mean, I know you, you may not have anything in solid yet, but I know there's a lot of parents out there with a, with a lot of questions about what, what our plans are. So I'd like to keep them in the, uh, you know, keep them informed, at least let them know you're talking about it. Sure. You know, I'm, I go back to this ad where it says, you know, brand new to Madison District this year. Targeted individualized instructional learning plans for all students, tier one, tier two, tier three. 
virtual K through 12 platform, blended online traditional in school learning. That's new stuff. Is that? I yes, mean, sir. That, that's yes, not, sir. Is that our plan going forward or is that separate from our school year going? What's the, I mean. So do you recall um, a few weeks ago you voted on a virtual platform for Edmentum? Yes. Yep. 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 So that's tier one, tier two, and tier three. It's a new virtual platform. It's K-12. So that is exactly what we're promoting, this new virtual platform. And it's got okay. three tiers of intervention. Um, and so that is new this year. And then the online, the virtual online, it is new because it's that new virtual platform. Before, right. if you look at our continuity learning plan, it was kind of online. But it wasn't, um, um, it was teacher led. This, this virtual platform, it, you know, students could take their own at, at their own pace and the programs will walk the students through it. Okay, so all, so, of, all of that is new. All right, so I'm just, as me, I'm, and I'm thankfully don't have a child in school. If I look at this, it sounds to me like you've already. You know, when I see the virtual K through 12 platform, blended online, traditional in-school learning and, and traditional in-school learning, I think we've already got a plan for what our next school year is going to look like. But that's not really, yes. I mean, that, that is an option you're saying. It doesn't, well, I mean. So what, I, what I'm saying is um, the governor needs a plan if we're on phase three. Phase three, we're bringing Edmentum. Uh, that's why we purchase Edmentum. Edmentum has courseware, which replaces uh, Edgenuity. That's what we used last year for um, grades nine through 12. Courseware is a self software from Edmentum. And so it is a virtual platform. We are scheduling training with the administrators first. We are training teachers, <clears throat> and then we will train students on day one when they're in brick and mortar so when it's time to do virtual or we have an outbreak or a snow day, it's an easier transition to virtual. Okay. It's just to me, and I, like I said, I don't, maybe the parents understand more than I do. To me, it sounds like we already have a plan for next year, but that's not, not the whole plan. You have a different to back to school. Go ahead. I'd like to add to that. Uh, I've been following this very closely. Uh, a lot of this, and Mr. Abdullah had will confirm this is in flux right now. Even the state has changed their minds on the requirements because uh, at one point they were required us to have four times the buses we have now. And it's just not feasible because the buses are not available, uh, getting drivers for the buses. So I know it's very frustrating to parents, but I think Mr. Abdullahad will uh, verify that this is constantly changing and that they have no set rule on how this is gonna work. A lot of it depends on the numbers, uh, depends on uh, when an, a, a vaccine will be available. There's a lot of different factors here. And but I believe we, we, this is, is mandated by the state or was decided through curriculum to open schools. Is that not correct? Um, the virtual platform, but you know, right. I, we could do a better job communicating to parents. Absolutely, we'll, we'll, we'll do a better job communicating if um, sometimes we're going faster uh, than we can communicate. And then sometimes we communicate something one week and then boom, we're liars because the governor comes up with something different. And right. we just communicated to the parents that we were gonna do. And so we're trying to avoid confusing them, but at the same time communicating. So I, I, I guess I could do a better job communicating and I'll do that, Mr. Pittman. I, I, but, I hear your concern on communication. But, and But on top of that, now we have the federal government saying they're gonna hold funds if we don't fully go back to school and the state is dealing with that. So there's a lot of different moving parts at this point and no one knows anything for certain. Okay, I have but one other item for discussion. Go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the um, job postings in the MASB MI staff job postings for our district. I see we have a job posting for a director of human service, uh, human resources operations, which would be the position that was terminated last meeting. I see an accounting coordinator payroll, which I would assume maybe when Carmen Rice retired, 
and then I see an accounting coordinator accounts payable. Is that something new? Is that a replacement? Is that, what, what is that? There's three job postings, I guess, and I'm wondering where the third we, one came from. We, we were trying to, uh, we were all new to posting, Mr. Pittman. These are new. Uh, you know, we've never posted before, so we were posting uh, the different job uh, descriptions. We're not looking at, um, we are restructuring our office and we're splitting our duties up. We are looking to replace the human resource, uh, but we're restructuring that. Um, and that's why we put operations in there because um, I need some help in, in, in central office. And, um, but it's not a new position. It's just additional duties assigned by the superintendent, which I am, I am free to, to assign. And, um, and then Carmen Rice's older, old position that was never filled. Right, uh, but then there's is, another one. Yeah, that was it. we were experimenting, but we we uh, we are approaching it differently. So we're not we're not presenting you a new position at all. So that 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 won't be a problem. <coughs> okay. Any anyone else? Okay. Um. All right. No. Uh, all right. There's nothing else. Let's move into board comments, and let's start with uh, Mr. Holcomb. Yeah, thanks. Um, I want to thank everybody. Uh, Angel, I think you're doing an awesome job. I mean, you, you don't have a crystal ball. You don't know what's coming tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this governor, she changes her mind every week. So you're doing a good job. Keep it up, buddy. Um, um, and all the parents and the people that's been involved in the garden, it's looking awesome. Uh, the tomato plants are huge. Uh, good job. Thank you for the donations to Home Depot. And uh, Heather went and picked up a couple uh, sprinklers. Thank you. Um, awesome. Keep it up, all of you. Thanks. OK, let's go with uh, Mrs. Thompson. Hi, I'd also like to thank everybody who's sat through this meeting. Um, I really would like to give a kudos out to Mr. Abdullahad and his crew with this, um, let me read it now, Unanticipated School Closure Claims Program. You know, I, I had a couple of people call and ask me about the cost of milk, the cost of, what you didn't understand is it might have cost us some money to put the food together, but we're getting money back under this program and my last to date amount was over 370,000 that we've gotten back but I believe we got more money in today I don't know what that amount is and I think this was just the best program we could have gotten ourselves into we have generated some pretty hefty revenue and I just would like to give you a hand because I like to see revenue come in <laughs> as treasurer. So thank you, Mr. Adulahad and anybody else who was involved in that. That, that was Kat, Kat yeah. Vice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She's phenomenal. Thank you, Kat. Yeah. Let's give everybody a hand because that was wonderful. And well, um, that, I'm, yeah. I'm good. Okay, uh, Mr. Pittman. Yeah, I do have one other thing and I, um, I want to talk to the rest of the board members here. Something maybe we need to keep uh, keep in our minds. And I don't think I'm letting out any confidential information anymore since I read it on Facebook today that Mr. Abdullahad has interviewed for an another superintendent position. What? And it, no. pardon me. <laughs> Nothing. Go ahead. We need to be prepared for what we will do in the interim if mr abdullahad was to accept another position you know maybe we need to speak with oakland schools and find out what they do you know what they could provide for us in the interim while we hire look for a new superintendent so wow well, you you um, got you got my bags packed already mr Pittman. i haven't even well, interviewed I, you're not you my got response. me packed you got you the, got me shipped out already this district and this community is my responsibility, not you. You're not mine. <laughs> so I I'm just saying, if I, you're going to be out there looking, we need to be prepared for what might happen. I, I just thought it was it's the wrong 
venue to bring out well, my my. We, we think it. each Don't other do a lot of does a lot of things wrong. When else can I get together with the board to tell them? Are we allowed to discuss things like this outside of a meeting? Yeah, as long as there's no quorum, sure. Well, how how could we discuss? How could how could I? Well, you guys can think I'm wrong. We can be even. Uh, who's suggesting you're wrong? Mr. Duha just said I was wrong for bringing it up in this uh, forum. Well, uh, it's a matter of opinion, but anyways. Yeah. Uh, All right. Any, anything else? That's, Mr. It. That's it for me. Okay. Uh, so let's go to uh, Mrs. Ah. Um, I thought Mr. Abdullahad's issue was still a confidential one, but um, anyway, it's it's obviously not. I want to. Uh, I just want to say that I hope that we can rectify um, the issue with the minutes for Beth. Um, I I take minutes during the meetings as well, even though I'm not still secretary. That's why I'm not looking at my screen all the time. Um, I just it's it's just heart heartening, disheartening, the negativity that that are, is getting thrown at us at the beginning of these meetings and stuff. We're supposed to be here for the kids, and our first half hour, 45 minutes, was all. I don't know. It's just very uh, disheartening. Um, I hope that we can become a cohesive board, at least for the time that we're here. Uh, again, I want to thank Mr. Abdullahad. I agree with Gloria that the uh, food program is wonderful. It has brought in a lot of revenue for our district. Thank you very much. And thank you to all the staff and um, helping Mr. Abdullahad continue this um, district moving forward. Thank you. All right, Ms. Scott. Um, yes, uh, first of all, I'd like to um, thank all the parents and the neighbors that have been helping with the garden, um, especially our secret weeder, who I really don't know who that is, but um, the couple come every other day and pull handfuls of weeds, which saves me. Um, the Mossy family for donations of the sprinklers, and of course, uh, my daughter and her husband, uh, Mr. Mr. Is Scott, in and out. Mr. Mr. and uh, Mrs. Ron Scott, they're always stopping to water the garden. Um, I want to thank everyone that uh, backed me, uh, Mr. Holcomb, Ms. Castle, Deb for backing, and Bill Pittman for backing me on the meeting minutes. Um, and uh, thank you, Mr. Dulhad, for answering all my crazy questions in regards to going back to school and special needs. Um, I know um, together on a group, we are working hard to try to change that. I can agree that it is ever changing, um, sometimes every other day. So I appreciate that and you answering my crazy questions and assisting all the parents that I know that is calling you. That's all that I have to say. Thank you. All right, and uh, I just wanna reassure Mr. Pittman about uh, Mr. Abdullah had interviewing with another district. We, we have a full package of photoshopped uh, damaging pictures that we're gonna release online before his interview. So I think we're gonna be just fine. Obviously I'm joking. And it seems, that, it seems to really interest people what I'm looking at. Uh, I have the agenda on an overhead screen off to the side of me and that's what I'm looking at, why people are wondering about that. And uh, although, yeah, there's harsh criticism at the beginning of the meeting. I would never try to take away someone's right if they're respectful to say their piece. So, and that's all I've got to say uh, for today. So, can we get a motion to adjourn the meeting? Mr. President? Yes. I'll make the motion. All right. I'll and, second it. All right. Mrs. Thompson will second it. Discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Kimball? Yes. Mr. Pittman? Yes. Mr. Holcomb? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. And Mrs. Ott? Yes. Motion passes six to zero. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned.